Hello and welcome to another episode of Soundcheck. Now, for those of you that do follow us, you may have listened to last week's episode. That episode was titled Joe Banwasi, Tom Waits and the Dubra Brothers. Now, you may be wondering, wow, what amazing podcast. I really should follow and like and subscribe and all that jazz to it. And you're right, you should. But you may also have been thinking, oh, that episode ended quite abruptly, just as I was starting to talk about Elvis. Now, there is a good reason that I did that, and that is because Wayne started to talk about Elvis. And you can't really just touch on Elvis. You've you've really got to get into the details of Elvis. And I believe that's deserving of its own episode. So this episode, which is probably going to be titled Elvis, is going to start where we left off last week. So I hope you enjoy. Do you know I was speaking earlier about... um... Uh, about Elvis, and I have never been a, a big fan. I, I've never really understood it. I've never, I, I didn't get it. I didn't get the commercial side of it, and that's probably what it is. I don't necessarily lean towards the commercial side of anything. And so when I see the hype around Elvis, I just sort of recoil against it. I don't necessarily say, oh, his stuff is made with crap. It weren't this good. It weren't this. It's just, it's not for me. It's just to work for me. It just does not work for me. When you say you recoil against it, is that I recall against him or recall against his style of music? Um, Well, that's actually a good question, Wayne. I don't don't really know. I want to put an answer to it, but... Or is it a bit of both? Probably everything. The whole aspect of him as a person and what he does and what he he sings, what he fetches out. And I'll tell you what, as I've got... Older and I've got more informed, it's got worse because I never got the pub singer. For me, he was just a, a glorified pub singer. When you say that Elvis is a pub singer, isn't that just because pub singers would take off Elvis? They would try and imitate him. Yes. And that's Cheap. what Good I point. see. Good that's point. what I see every time I Good see point. him. Yeah. Yeah. It's some bloke in a bar. Hey, yeah, sure we've all seen him. We've uh-huh. all seen him. And it, it just, what was the attraction? What was the because of Bonnie he sent 59, the girl, he sent the girls wild. Bonnie fifty nine didn't become musically aware until sixty nine, should we say, or a little bit later. So by this time, he's eating ill. He's eating at Las Vegas. He's, he's, he's past the peak of his career. Do you think it could have been the pelvic thrust that got into well, you know, <laughs> the women went wild? Well, no, it was the men were at the bar. No, the it women wasn't. were all it, ripping it, the claws it, off. It never as as he did the the. The pelvic thrust in these big shoes. I was more fascinated with the the story behind the story, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. It became more interesting about Elvis, the story that was Tom Parker and the roots and stuff around the story. Not not necessarily Elvis and his music. It was just the story of it himself. Well, not that fascinating that made me become an Elvis fan. It was just like, well, it, it wasn't necessarily everything that people thought he was, in a sense that Tom Parker used him as a puppet. The stories behind Elvis are almost now a bit like a Greek mythology, aren't they? There's like mm. these basic truths like, don't trust your manager, or like, well, well be careful of the drugs and burgers. <laughs> Las Vegas, it'll get you. Don't fly too close to the sun, they shall end up fat and dead on a toilet. There's a photo of oh, oh, there's, the there's, there's a photo of him <laughs> stood next, next to Nixon. Because he wanted President to be, Nixon. Yes. He wanted to he, well, he wasn't the magician Nixon. The magician Nixon and the white <laughs> he, Well he was a magician koala. actually. <laughs> he, <laughs> and he stood and he stood at in, I, I guess the White House and he's getting presented as a an honorary DEA agent in drug enforcement. Mm. And he's off his tits. He's got a gun as well, hasn't he? A gold, yeah, he's off his is tits. It a gold revolver or something like that. And he's on prescription drugs. But because he's on prescription drugs, he's not He's all right. He's and he's really drugging. against People like Led Zeppelin because they are Talented. degenerates. <laughs> Who, Elvis? Yeah. Elvis met Led Zeppelin, though. Well, he might have done, but he thought they were degenerates. Because they were talented. He described them as degenerates. He was also a fan Robert Plant. I don't met, think so. Robert Plant met yes, Elvis. Well, he Robert, might have met Robert him, Plant, yeah. but Elvis thought that Led Zeppelin were degenerates. I wonder what he thought of Tom Jones, because they were good friends, weren't they? I thought Did he only met him twice. No, they were good no, friends. Been to no, they were like no. best mates. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tom has been to uh, his house uh, yeah. On many of the occasions, yeah, they were, they were really good friends. Well, fair do. It's not unusual. Yeah. Good old, and can good I just say that I I have been to Graceland. I know, you, and you, I'm not an Elvis fan by any, 
But if anybody really goes to Memphis, you must go to Graceland. The place is actually amazing. Have you ever gone walking in Memphis? I have. I've been to the Jungle Room. <laughs> and I have stepped on Beale. There's a pretty little thing <laughs> down in the jungle room. It's not as good as Beale, but the place is unbelievable. And that's no. from an on uh, that's from you a say unbelievable. Is it just does it take you by surprise? Yes, or it does, does it just say it makes you think how over the top or how uh, under the top or how it makes you think when you're walking in there because of how the statue of Elvis is so big. You get to feel... Is it, is it as big as the one that floated down the Thames of Michael Jackson? Probably. <laughs> I mean, that's history now, though. Yes. <laughs> it's When you go there, it, the place is just unbelievable. It makes you actually think like... I don't you know, believe you. Perhaps this guy is, you know, I underestimated him. <laughs> or did the, you buy in? It really, no, I don't think I bought into it. And I don't think there's anything to buy into as in falseness. You just, if you if you go to Memphis, you need to go and see Graceland and have your own views on it. But you won't be disappointed. I wasn't disappointed. It was a lot more than I expected. And that's from a non-Elvis fan. I come out of there and I was like, wow, that just unbelievable. Why was those trousers? The old, the old tour and the learning of him and seeing his suits and his collections of this that and other it was just like jesus i heard that, that his own just, sweat would clean his suits that would just you <laughs> 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 yes yes you i were? heard that as well that must be true then yeah but it's if not as good it, that, that means if two of us have heard it the more he sweated true. the cleaner his suits would be yeah but it's not as good as bill you must he needs to go to bill as well anyway so we will go back to your thing of uh, Elvis. Yeah, where were I? You're disdained for Elvis. No, I've not got a no. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm There's nothing about him you like. No tracks. I, I tell you what, I do I, like. I, I, I do like. Um, I mean, you've got. I ghetto. do understand. Yeah, that's a decent. That track. It played a big part in the development of yeah. music, although it wasn't an intentional manoeuvre on his part, or or even Tom Parker's. It was just a, a natural development. These things came at the right time. Are you one of the people that can remember where you was when Elvis died? No, I don't remember where I was. 1977, I would be. It's not worth looking at me, Wayne. 86, I was born. You weren't even born. I was was eight. I was in a caravan in um, Memphis, Great Yarmouth, with um, with my mum and my dad and my nan and my granddad on the Vauxhall caravan side. Oh, all right. um, I was... Uh, no, I wasn't eight. I was 18. I was Sorry. You, I might have been eight. <laughs> yeah, you was. You was eight. I was 18. And I... What? Yeah. And I was in this caravan, and it came on the old 10 o'clock news. With bon, big the ben. old 10 o'clock news? Yeah. As opposed to what the news yeah, they comes don't on do, now at 10. Yeah, but they don't do it like they used to, do they? <laughs> Apparently. Now they've got like a remix and a bit of a rap. Oh, is, is it? Yeah. I know. Chicka, chicka, 10 this o'clock. This um, Trevor Mc... Uh, te- uh, Trevor, Trevor McDonald. McDonald. Do- McDonald. Trevor but, uh, McDonald. That's the. It's very, a difficult name to say. That's the very chap. <laughs> yeah, he's and, got golden and, arches. Uh, yeah, I think it were him and all them malarkey come on and he says breaking news: uh, Elvis has died. And my mum and my dad were just like, "What? Oh no!" My dad, I can remember my my mum and my dad and my nan and granddad being just they couldn't believe it. It were like they they'd lost a member of the family. And I was like, yeah, well, well all right, it's a, yeah. Again, it's probably a generational thing that then. Isn't this it? guy that I have, to, I've, I mean, not forget, I'm, I, I, I don't know, I'd have been 78. You'd be eight. I'd have been eight. You'd have been eight, 78. Eight. Good Lord. I'd have been, yeah. You're like Benjamin Button. I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought to myself, God, the guy that I have to listen to every day has died. And But at that age, you know, you don't, you don't realise. I've heard his stuff. From my parents and my grandparents playing it, and I'd seen films because I, I used to have to watch them. But to me, I'm it would it quite would just... aware of him. Uh, uh, obviously, That's... you are. You can't avoid him, yeah, really. But no. it never made a big. It was never a big deal to me. It, it would never. So your parents and grandparents were not well, Elvis fans. Strange or... enough, music in our house didn't. Rev- it wasn't really like that. Me, my dad was more. Like he liked a bit of country and western. He liked a bit of military band stuff. Um, my mum liked a bit of popular stuff, things of the day. You know, uh-huh. we'd listen to 
stuff on a Sunday, which were like, the, obviously they'd be always involved in it somewhere along the lines. But it weren't a big musical house, really. So I had never, I had no strong influences coming through in that respect. Is that because your mum and dad want music lovers or they just liked... Well, they didn't dislike they liked, music. Uh, they, they didn't liked, dislike music. No, what, they didn't, yeah, they didn't what I meant, collect like. music or they didn't... No. If it were on, it were on. If it wasn't, it won. Yeah. yeah. Here's a question from somebody who's not from that generation. The wheel was invented, I assume. Well, no, actually, we, no. we were actually still working on that. He had a bit well, of a, yeah, yeah, we, he, had, we, he had an oval. We, yeah, we got, I think, I think we we got was, to the oval. We was but, working on the roundness of it. It was but, a little bit lumpy in them days. We, but when but you, here's the question. When you hit the edges. So was music as important to day-to-day life? Like, So if for me growing up, music was uh, I think was I everywhere. I personally, I, I mean... Like, was it culturally as important? Like, I know they had brass bands. Oh, I can't answer stuff. that, because I weren't of that generation. But it, yeah, but I know when I grew up that, was. that music was culturally so important. Like, I w- that music was a big part I would have thought of, that, he, of union. that your dad would have been able to answer this more than me, but from what I can remember, music is way bigger now than I remember it or influencing it when I was growing up. Right. I think it's bigger now, music. Music wasn't a big deal in our house. When I was very young, but in today, what's what I'm saying? So today's house, it is really so. They're like there were nobody played an instrument. There was it went on to later when I would probably be in my early teens, where like my dad decided to play banjo because he was into country and bluegrass and things like mm, that. Mm. So it, it's music. But that's what I mean. Music so, came to our house later. So your family in today's life would probably be be, be more music orientated, wouldn't they? I think music today is bigger than what what we grew up with. Yes. It has a more, more of a, access to it. More I of think that's access. the reason why. It has a more of an influence within the household. Yeah, well, if you look at the times... That w- There's we a had, lot more music going off. People define themselves by yeah. genres of music. Yes, now. yeah. If you look yeah. at what Back we got then. at the yeah. time, we had three ra- TV stations, one t- two TV stations, I think, yeah. and, and, and one two, I, two I, radio stations, I, that were it. Three, I can remember three. I had BBC One, BBC Two, and uh, Thames, te- uh, not Thames Television, ITV, Thames ITV. Television. So, yeah. in that respect. But 10 years earlier than that, there was even less than that. Yeah. In, in that respect, can you imagine how exciting the prospect of Elvis would have been? Yes. To suddenly oh, identify. Yeah, yeah. And to yeah. understand why cl- people went yeah. off the face. Absolutely. To, to claim something yeah. as, oh, this is my yeah. music, this is my genre. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, I get all like, that. You, yeah. Like, this is new. It's completely yeah. new. All right, here's, here's one for you. Do you think Elvis would have been big today? It, it's a good question. In what context, though? Like, how do you mean? Would Elvis have been Elvis Presley? You mean if a man... King of up, king of rock and roll, would he have been well, in today's music, I, in today's... I know what you're saying. Jordan, would Elvis be Elvis? I know what you're saying, but I think... It would work. The, the problem is... I don't think it would have. The reason yeah. we have the music today is because of Elvis. So, in no, order to... No, no, no. No, I'm no, not, I'm not accepting I'm not that. buying that either. It's no. not. It's yeah. not important whether you accept it or not. That that's the truth. No, it's not. It completely is. No, it's not. You've already said in a previous I, podcast that uh, I think he has Little Richard don't get enough. credit. Yeah, he doesn't get enough credit. But who brought and, who and, brought and, the and sound all, to the masses? Who does yeah. everyone refer back to? Yeah. Led Zeppelin refer back to Elvis. Yeah. The well, Beatles yeah, refer do. back to Elvis. Yeah, I the think Rolling Elvis. Not, back I to think Elvis. Elvis had a you massive. Back before you that, don't go back get, to Little Richard. You don't get the Beatles without Elvis. You don't get the Rolling Stones without Elvis. You don't get Led Zeppelin no, without Beatles. No, you don't Sorry. get the Beatles Elvis. without Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get you don't get the Beatles without Elvis and Little Richard. Yeah, but I think Elvis's influence was massive, huge. He is the he's the the, but the I, anchor point back to yes, the source. It's but part I, st- of I the still equation. Think, it's st- not the equation. Yes, he's the majority of the equation. But he's not. He's not the equation. Not I, yeah, I agree with you on that one. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. You would. You might not have come to the the area that we're in now without him, but we we would have moved on. And music would have grown. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying and that grown would, and yeah, grown and grown and grown. Absolutely, but like I'm saying, it does but, now. And, and, yeah. but it would have it would have moved on, but it would have been totally different than it is now. And I feel like sometimes mm-hmm. artists have to die in order for us to transition. So I feel like mm-hmm. Elvis completely had to die. Personally, I think that Michael Jackson should have died years ago in order for us to move on from Michael Jackson. Kurt Cobain died. Grunge. Jimi Hendrix, amazing mm-hmm. guitar player, died. Freddie Mercury died. All these people that have made massive changes and successes, yeah. they die, and then things change afterwards. 
So would you have said that Hendrix was big in music? Big. I think he created one large wave. As in? I don't think he was a tide. I think he made one splash, and that splash was like, wow, remember that splash? Don't you? Th I mean, how many albums did Hendrix make, or tracks did he fetch out? He fetched quite a few, didn't he? Yeah, but he died, you know. So yeah. out of all of those tracks, or all of those albums, he probably had f five but, decent... But but wait, but my point is, if Hendrix was still alive today, people wouldn't be as excited about it. No, they wouldn't. People no. wouldn't be noticing. No, people they wouldn't. be thinking, oh, we've got to listen to that. No, because he would have released... He, he, no. They so, all have their time. Yeah, but... Yeah. And their time is it can be it can be short it can be two years one years to ten years but they all have a period of time when it's their time and that time will that light will go out and even if Hendrix was alive today he would probably either if he was still in music he would be not the not the influential person. So he could he? Because so he, could he? he so could he? Come up, saying, though, yes, like, I do. I know it, what you the, mean. The fact yeah. that they die. Amplifies their yes, it, their, it, the, the, yeah, yeah. yeah it does, does it yeah. unnecessarily amplify? In some cases, yeah, it yeah, does. It does yeah. But in the in like do the, the, the do case they that become in, worshipped in the case, when because the so in the last pre the in the in, in the last previous podcast, do you think Hendrix comes in that category as slightly overrated? No, no, I don't. I but think a lot of his music is overrated, not. but the the thirty percent. Of his music, I know he moved us on. The thirty yeah. percent of his music was in the terms of guitar orientated music. It was uh, an absolute game changer. Yeah. One but of the things that he did was he it he didn't even though it wasn't technically invented and it was coined then he was using the cage system before it was the cage system. Yeah, and he got it from where? Does anyone know? Nobody knows. No, he wouldn't. He didn't get it from these old cage. Booths. He didn't get it from these blues players because they barely knew the elbow from their ass. Well, yeah, they yeah. just did what sounded right, which is fine. But Hendrix was like a whole new level of like, whoa. I look at it as in, all right then, I'm not aiming this at you. Oh, this is getting personal. No, we're not. No, absolutely not. You're an asshole, Louis. <laughs> but this is probably the best way of explaining what I'm trying to say. Is, so you as a big Rolling Stones fan. Okay could name me five tracks from Rolling Stones without really thinking about them. Yeah. Couldn't you? You could do that, couldn't you? Quite uh, yeah. easily. Uh -huh. Could you name me five Hendrix tracks without actually thinking about it? So, The Wind Cries Mary, Red House, All Along the Watchtower, which is a Bob Dylan cover, Voodoo Child, Electric Lady. Oh, you're starting to think about it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm and not allowed to think. But, but, but that's yeah, what yeah. I was saying. You have uh, cross to... Crosstown Traffic. Once you... Foxy Lady... Once Purple you, Haze. Once you get them seven or eight tracks I, from Hendrix out of the way... I see what you're saying. You're but, stuck. But, but you're referring to the popular tracks that yes, people should know. Yes, but that's all he's, that's but, all he's known for. No, no, no. If I'd no. have said to you, name me 15 Rolling Stones tracks, you'd have gone... Bah, 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 yeah, bah, bah, but bah, 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 the, Rolling Stones, and you the Rolling Stones have been around a lot longer than Hendrix. And, and that's like what, for a young um, man yes. to, to revolutionise the guitar, like to revolutionise the guitar, to be so good at the guitar as a young man. Oh, yeah, I'm and not. To produce I'm the not songs he did and the colours he did. Think... Bob Dylan has said that the best version of All on the Watchtower is Jim Hendrix, and he wrote the song. <laughs> But it probably is. I'd probably, it is, it is I'd probably agree yeah. with that. I mean, yeah. it is on, didn't yeah. Yes. it? He, yeah. he, he admits that I that think is the that best that way. Track, I think you've got to give him that. Mm. Yeah. I just think he was... I'm not going to say overrated, because he wasn't. He, he was just bloody good for what he did in that time. I know what you're trying to say. I just think his albums and, and his songs... If you take his body of work... Let's go back to a You can disregard 70% of, of it. Yes. So, going back to three or four podcasts ago... When the skip button come in, yeah. I would use the skip button yeah. on Hendrix <laughs> yeah. on a lot of stuff. Here's a, I'll take your statement and I'll I'll raise you. Ooh. Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah. You see, I'm not a massive fan. Is of Stevie Ray Vaughan ever so slightly overrated? I'm not a massive fan. I mean, of Stevie you think Ray of Stevie Ray Vaughan? You think of the Texas Shuffle? You think of that shuffle sound? That but I'm not a massive. I was just about to say I'm not a massive Texas blues fan. It's very good, but is it? Is it all one thing? Now, we're talking to a massive Stevie Ray Vaughan fan. 
Hey, come oh, on, wait. It's, it's, it's got a bit of weight, but no, 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 no. It's, it's not for that way. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> it's been, Steve it's Ray Vaughan fan, but I'm not a massive Steve Ray Vaughan fan. Uh, you used to make me watch him just so I could watch him gurn. Well, oh, he's a tremendous gurner. <laughs> well, like, no, nobody no, gurns see, like you Steve used Ray to say, You used to say, here, fat bloke, watch this. Yeah. Well, that what period, fat bloke is an endearing this? compliment. Uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, a familiar <laughs> nickname that it would refer to you as. <laughs> At that particular period in your musical development, you were still finding out about these people. And now we're just introducing you to different people. Mm. And it worked. It worked, yeah. And introducing to Steve Ray Vaughan is an essential part of that development, I think, because everybody should look at Steve Ray Vaughan and they should, if they, even if they're not really into either guitar music or texture shuffle or... It's an ingredient to be aware of in the cooking of music. It's, yeah. If you're into pop, then don't yes. bother it's watching some, it. It's someone that shouldn't be passed. But I think it was like an antenna. Uh, I don't know how to describe it, really. It, it, if he wanted to, he could stand with his, his guitar and the, he would be able to play all day because it simply just come through him. That It could naturally flow constantly through one form or another. Don't mean to say it were any good. He, the certain parts of it were just endless. But did he make that big a difference on the music scene? Uh, we've got a lot of people that's followed on in that respect, that's gone down that route and... Was he Hendrix, but with a different accent? I don't think he's influenced as many people as Hendrix did, because he, he, Hendrix completely changed the way we looked at music. One it, of the things that I find interesting, with, with this is specifically regards to guitar playing, so if you're not a guitar player, then bear with us, but I feel like anyone that's worth their salt, they, there's a certain criteria that you have to pass, and that's to do a cover of Voodoo Child. By Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> well, Voodoo Child yeah. is one of these songs where it's not specifically a technical song. It's just, it's got so much aggression and feel and free spirit to it that, it, that, you, that can, is... you can expand on it as much as you like and you can bring it home to where you want it to be. And I, but, I feel like it's a gateway to how are you that's at the guitar point. playing. Yeah. If you can dust that one down then you've got a good chance of being respected by other fellow... It's a gateway song, isn't it? Yeah, because it, it is... You've got to really... You can't paint by numbers with that one. I mean, you can, and a lot of people do, but... Well, that's you, a problem. It's not considered good. That's the problem. It, it's, people it, do. It's such a It's a great song, open to your own interpretation of it. No, no. Mm. If, you, if you're going to do it... If you're well. going to do it, you've got to do it religiously. No. Note by note perfect like Hendrix did it you've got to give it your own little feel to it but you've got to do it with conviction oh yeah conviction yeah but you, I don't think you, you need to actually do it you trying to do Hendrix's version that's what I'm trying to say the song has got so much width in it that you can yeah. make your own song out of it you can make your own version of it but you can make a very bad version sure and that's the that's the thin line that you can cross right so this week I've been listening to many of things and blah de, blah de, blah de, blah and Tonight's conversation has got me even thinking it even more that I might have a quite a valid point because we're all talking about old stuff, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, blah de blah de blah de blah Do you think that the old bands who we are been speaking about, do you think they're going to have a sell by date? We, we stop talking about them. And we actually start talking about the things that's coming up around us now if you look at the spotify playlist people are hitting more on the old songs than they are on the new yeah. ones yeah and so what you're saying is what well, it's either why or have they got have they got a, a well, have they got a, is there is there, is there going to be a point where I, I mean louis might still be but me and you might have gone where people go let do who Z well, there will be. There Led will, there will be. That's just a generational Led thing. Led Zeppelin. Ooh. How many, how are they going to keep referring back the to these, the origins of rock music? Like they keep referring back to Elvis as the rock music. Yeah. Well, I think they will. What? There will be a sell by date? No, I think they'll always refer back are you, to are you, are you, are the So you don't think there'll be a sell by date? No. No, they will. You reckon? Yeah. They Why will. do you think there will be? Everything does. The greatest stars of Hollywood in the 30s and 40s. Yeah, nobody today will be able to name, really, and it'll happen. Why are we still talking about Elvis then? 
Well, there's still people alive when he died. So at some point, don't forget our generation. Yeah, so yeah, because you, you, you our just, generation it, was alive when Elvis. It's Louis' generation yeah. that. Yeah, you just and, spoke and, about and, and that remembering is, that when he was when he point. died. Yeah. That is the point. It's inevitable that. So time when, will pass. so when our generation and the one under me goes, that will be probably the last generation of Elvis's living generation. Well, so yeah, then it, yeah, it, I get it, that. It becomes However, yeah, so then that. Will, will they be like Elvis? Oh, Elvis! No, no so, I don't think never so. Heard because, it. because there's so much media-oriented information these days, as opposed to back in the thirties, where there was none. That's why then people have forgotten. However, it will be there as part of the mm. the, the general opinion that, that they know about Elvis. Like we know about Bach and we know about Beethoven. You know, Beethoven and, and, and Bach and all that stuff were. They were even documented in no, media. Exactly. They, it was all it was it was all written papers. Yeah, yeah. But obviously, Elvis has got films and X, Y, Z made about. It. But everything has an expiry date. Everything has a, a linear shelf life. It's like but to that, yeah, deny but, that. Is, yeah, no, no, I, you know. I don't deny that. But what it is 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 like the, the shelf life is is extended as technology mm-hmm. and as generations go on. Absolutely, yeah. So yeah, in three hundred years time. Maybe they're not talking about Elvis as much, or they're not talking about Led Zeppelin as much. But a hundred years' time, I think they'll be just as much as they are now. So, do you think that the old bands are actually stopping the new bands from coming through? Yeah, they are. And it's not their fault. No, but, but they are. No, no, yeah. Yeah. Is it because we're still hung up on Rolling Stones and we're still hung up on ACDC and Elvis Presley and all them, but we're actually slightly neglecting the bands that are up and coming, but we still refer to the oldest style of music. So you can say this within multiple art forms, whether it be paintings or, you know, sculptures or whatever. And I think the closer you get to the current day, I think there's more of a an appeal of notoriety and fame. And I think that eclipses somewhat the art form itself. So in regards, because we're talking about the Rolling Stones, they didn't expect that they'd have a career past the age of 30. So they just wanted to create good songs. And I feel like it's less about making good songs, but it's more about making hits. And I think that's the problem. I think the artistic credibility has been sacrificed for hits. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Personally. Well, yeah. I don't know. When the Stones go out now, what do they do? I'm not necessarily about now. But I'm not about like when they were were recording their like the the hits, their famous songs. Yeah. They they weren't. I think they were trying to create great songs, the best song that they could well, think of. I don't. Think, nobody goes into a recording studio to make a bad song. I know, no, it's, I know that, but like, I don't think they were just trying to make. I think they're trying but to. But do you think it's? Stuff I don't. Like... I don't think they thought it that. I don't think they thought of it that way. My point is that. They assumed that their career was was, was a limited. Thing. Yeah, they thought, yeah. okay, so I, I want to make something that's that means something, that yeah. says something, and has an impact. Yeah, but how Today, do you think, how do you think I, that's holding the new stuff back? Because people recognise weight. But how do uh, but how do you know that? I don't know. Well, but, they didn't know that at the time. No. No, that's beautiful. They were it. making the best thing that they could, and they—they—that's the way they felt. And then the naivety of it is the purity of it. Do you think? Do you think that? Do you think that the old stuff's holding back the new stuff from coming through? No, and, I think I and think reaching the potential. Well, I think there's a natural pecking order within everything, and if it's good enough to come through, it will generate its own interest. But how does but, an, but, how, how does, does new stuff come through? What you've got to With understand, a lot of stones. you're looking at it. From your demographic, you're looking at it from your perspective, and and Louis, you're looking at it from yours. But what I'm not thinking about is is yours. No, no, no. What no, is I, now? I, I don't know. The hottest thing out there. Now it's not going to be the Stones, and it's not going to be Elvis Presley. No, but we're not saying that. We're, no, we're, not we're saying talking that. about the longevity of it. But we're so, not. So they are them. So artists longevity are artists not holding back is so, artists. But longevity artists. I don't mean that in a negative be. way. I mean it is. is are we still referring to? So if you put your Spotify on or or the other forms of music streaming, do you say, right? I'm going to listen to uh, Rolling Stones today, or do you say, oh, oh, there's a new band that I heard. Um, called I don't, I don't know this is a made up band called um, the Clockworks. I, I'm gonna listen to them. Yeah, I can guarantee that in twenty years' time, 
people will be talking and listening to Taylor Swift, Ed Sheeran, and oh, the Arctic Monkeys. Well, there will be. I push up. Yeah, that there will generation. be. Yeah, but I'm, I'm that like, generation. Yeah. What, what about ten years? What? Ten no, years? The, it's, it's, in ten years we'll just we'll talk well, about I said twenty. It's I said probably 20 more years. relevant. Oh, sorry, right. It's probably more relevant. I think it's five say years. In Forty years. No, no. So, so let's go fifty years then. Yeah. Will they still be talking it will about be that Taylor Swift? Probably. They'll probably still be talking about Taylor Swift next year. Really? No. Yeah. Well, that generation years? they'll be saying, "Why we're we still listening to Taylor wow. Swift? What is she?" No, I don't think it is. I mean, one of the reason we've got Rolling Stones around now is because they're a jukebox band that plays the hits. And um, Louis alluded to this in a couple of podcasts since, where he said that all the hits that are being hit, done on Spotify are the old stuff. Yeah. Mm. And because the good, creative, inventive, and we're not getting that in today's music. People are getting sloppy. People are getting sloppy. And so they refer backwards towards the uh, so-called iconic hits. And that's why the likes of The Stones, Journey, ACDC, Def Leppard, cool. they're all going out and becoming... Jukebox band. So, well, they're it, still it, as big as they are as what they were thirty it, years ago. Aren't they? The more in, the Def Leppard are any more money now. Yeah, than they were there. back in eighty. So Def Leppard, and they earned a shitload of money back in eighty. Def, Def, what, Def 30, Leppard re-recorded 30, their stuff. So Def Leppard were screwed in a, in a business contract, much like Taylor Swift at the moment. So Taylor Swift has, has gone back and re-recorded all. You would think about Taylor Swift, don't you? She's, oh, she's current. She mm. what? Oh. Taylor Swift has re-recorded all her previous albums because. She's been screwed in a contract. I can't tell you one hit she's made. So Def Leppard did that about 10 years ago. They re-recorded their music and took ownership of it. So when you play them now, it's it's a re-recording of it. It's not the original version. It sounds spot on, but it's a re-recording. But another, He's got another point. I've got another point. I am. I am. You're coming up with some good questions tonight. Yeah. It's the most unlike you. It is. It's very unlike me. I've done a lot of listening and, and, and mooching about over the week. So I've also come across the fact that we, we, we're all going to agree that Rolling Stones and ACDC and Elvis Presley and all them type of people we've talked about, they have ruled the roost for the last, I don't know, 40, 50 years, haven't they? They've been at top at ladder and they've not really been knocked off by anybody coming through. These people tried, but they've just not got there. So who do you think is the next Rolling Stones? Oh, we don't know, do we? Who do you think is around at the moment that is going to be the Rolling Stones? The Inter- anybody? Of I'll, I'll tell you. I know this. The who's going to be? It. Yeah, yeah, I know this. Who's going to be? Wayne, Wayne. Who's gonna he be, knows this one. Wayne, I'm going to tell go you. On, go on then, do it. Taylor Swift. No, Don't, no, no, please no. Answer Taylor Swift. Daniel O'Donnell. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't really know. Like uh, Kanye is taking a massive dive recently. I don't know if you're aware of Kanye West and what's happened with that. Yeah, he got yeah, anti-Semitic he, comments. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, yeah been, he's been he's, slated. He, yeah, he's, he's, he does come out with some shit though. Doesn't he it? does. It's yeah. uh, a lot of people like that. Oh yeah, speak Kanye, speak. But is is no. The thing is, no. You, you're praising an unwell man. He's got mental issues, and you're not helping the situation by by encouraging his behaviour. I don't know if if there are any real artists out there today who have the longevity to sustain 50 years. And that's not a reflection on them. No. It's more of a reflection on how fast the market changes. What, from today's music, from yesteryear's it music? Just, it, it, like, well, the, look at it 10 years ago. It's the fast fashion. The market 10 years ago was completely different to what it is Oh, now. yeah. Yeah, it was. And that's because the consumerability, is that the right word? That The consumption of music is completely different from... 10 years ago. And the what? way that you consume music, so Spotify tracks have to get to the chorus as quick as possible in order to retain anyone's attention. So all the kids today are hooked on TikTok and it's all about instant engagement. Catch your, okay. catch your engagement as, as quick as possible and you've got a minute to do it and after that minute, that's it. Now on to the next video. So you've got a minute, you've got 60 seconds to get to the point of your song and it better repeat itself because you've lost your attention after that. So basically what the music industry is going to turn to is... 60 second jingles. What about people like it's all, Yeah, that, I think that's the key thing, Louis. You know, a yeah, good thing prob- yeah, because yeah. music is not becoming music anymore, it's becoming jingles. Jingles. Yes. Yeah. What it's, about people like Ed Sheeran, though? Jingles again. 
They're all yeah. jingles. Jingles. So Ed like Sheeran. Ed, we can say extended yeah. jingles, but like they that. are jingles. Yeah, I like that Ed Sheeran. It's a good way of describing them. Ed Sheeran is Christmas jingles. A good artist. It, it is quite tactical in the way he performs. Like, Fifty he, he creates, Fifty years today. So it, uh, what, one of the things that Ed Sheeran does is he he will find trending topics or popular topics of songs, and he will write like fifty songs for each topic, say, and then he will pick the best one out of those topics, and then that will be an album. He'll throw enough crap at the wall, and whatever he feels sticks and hits all the keywords, he'll choose. And there's a great meme where somebody is holding up. Do you know those um, those really cheap, cheesy? Do you know that cheese that's in plastic wrapping? Yeah. And you put it on a burger at barbecues. You, uh, you, un- you unwrap it from its from its plastic. Oh wrapping. right, uh, craft. Like cheesy cheese. slices. Yes, yeah, cheese slices, craft. And the packaging says ten cheesy slices, and the the, the meme says. Ed Sheeran's new album. Right. Ten cheesy tracks. Ten cheesy, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's the far. <laughs> there we go. Always good to end on a cheesy joke. I mean, that one was specifically cheesy, but nah. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the episode and we'll see you next week. Follow us for any updates that we might pop in the meantime. Bye. Thank you.